and welcome back to my channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Angie and I'm a chemist who loves makeup. So today we're going to be talking about those documents that Jaclyn Hill put in her uh, My Lipsticks video, I think it was called. But basically these are supposed to act as her proof that her products were safe, that nothing was wrong with them, that, you know, everything that happened. So I have worked in manufacturing. I've seen these kind of documents before. So I'm going to share with you my opinion of what I believe these are and kind of tell you if these actually mean anything. To be honest, most of these documents really don't mean anything to the average consumer. They mean more to people who are looking to work with this manufacturing facility. And so we're just going to go into everything and see if there's actually anything that they're telling us. So I had posted a thread on my Twitter and these are the documents that got shared on there. So one was this Certificate of Good Manufacturing Practices. And it basically just says that this manufacturing facility meets these standards set by these people, they are claiming themselves that they meet these standards and they sign it off and it says that these products produced for Jaclyn Cosmetics meet the international requirements of good manufacturing and quality control. So it has like, you know, signature, the name. So people were freaking out because it says effective date 4 19 2017. So let me explain what I believe this to be. So because in the bottom left hand corner it says SOP and then it says form. So what an SOP is, that's called a standard operating procedure. This you're going to find everywhere. This is what the company and employees are supposed to follow all the time. And this appears to be a form within it. Based on this, I believe that this is a form that they fill in the blank, so i.e. Jaclyn Cosmetics, they'll put her name in there, they'll put the name of the person, so it's just a template that they have and they fill it out that's attached to whatever this procedure is. And that's why it says effective date 417. They just haven't updated the template since 2017, which really isn't that long. As long as everything still applies, they're not gonna update it. And that's not really a long amount of time to change something. And it looks like this is the first revision. They haven't changed this since 2017 when it became effective. That doesn't really tell anything to the consumer. It's just, it's just a certification that they say that they meet these standards. All right, so the next one we're gonna go with, because this was another big one, is this document that says SGS at the top, and it has, and it says that this place meets the certification for ISO, and the number is 22716, and cosmetic guidelines on good manufacturing practices, you know, for cosmetic manufacturer, but the responsibility of the quality of the individual batches is up to the company that is producing them, and it says that this certificate is valid from 2017 to 2020, so that's actually quite a bit amount of time since the audit, it has the signature from the person. So basically this just looks like a certificate from an audit that they had performed. This is just what they provide that so that they met their standards. Again, doesn't mean very much to the average consumer. So it just kind of shows in August of 2017, they finished their audit, thought they were good, and said, hey, we'll give you a pass until 2020, until that time which you need to be re-audited, or if they come back and then they come and check out their facility and then they could always take this away. Third party audits like this are very common. Um, they kind of just show that, you know, they show that you meet someone's standards. This is just a third party saying, hey, this place follows our standards. They're good. But unless you know what those, unless you're familiar with it and know what those standards are, that doesn't mean a lot to you. Again, this would mean a lot for somebody who's looking to work with them. And this one is another big one because people found a similar looking document for a manufacturing facility in Belgium that actually, I think it said like 2015 or something like that. And people were freaking out because it has the same signature, it has everything. Again, half of the signatures on this are blocked out. The addresses are blocked out on the one that Jacqueline provided. And this other one did have it and it says in Belgium. But that's a very common thing, especially if this SGS company is based out of Belgium. It's very common for them to send auditors over or they'll have auditors maybe in the US that will go over. So a lot of people were worried about this and thought that she was using this lab in Hungary or wherever it ended up being. I don't think that facility in Hungary has anything to do with Jaclyn Hill's facility just appears that they both got audited by the same company, which obviously this is a company that audits people, so that makes sense. So I hope that gives some clarity on that because a lot of people were worried about that. And the little signature being the same, it looks like they just stamp it on and they just default stamp it on. So I'm not really worried about this document, but then again, it, do it doesn't mean much to the consumer. Next, we're gonna talk about that hygiene policy that they put up there. So that again, this hygiene policy is just saying this is what they are supposed to do on a day-to-day -day basis. I imagine every 
place that manufactures for any sort of consumer product would have something like this. It's just a basic procedure that says they need to change their gloves. Like it's not really anything special and it doesn't really guarantee anything. So that's not really something that means a whole lot to me either. These are all very common things that don't really show much if that makes sense. This appears to be um, put together by that consulting firm that is on the back. There, it says that their products should be safe if you use it how you're normally supposed to use it. The only concerning thing to me on it was the first part of it, or they did say they did micro testing. I don't know if it was on a smaller batch and then it came under whatever the limit they put on there was. And they said that there shouldn't be any problem because they heated up to 90 degrees Celsius. Nothing should survive at that. And it says that their product is anhydrous. It does say it has water on the ingredients list, so that's not really anhydrous. Um, so I don't know what's going on with that. And it does have preservatives, so nothing should grow. Basically, it said it wasn't necessary for them to do these microbiological tests because there's no water. There is water in it. I don't know how much water's in it, but I think they should have paid the extra few hundred dollars per batch it was going to cost to do this testing. And that brings me to our last document. And this is probably the one that you can actually pull some information from. And this is a certificate of laboratory analysis. And so this shows, you know, the testing that they performed. It shows the lot number, manufacture date, expiration date, all that fun stuff. Um, they didn't do micro testing according to this. It says there's no micro testing listed on there. So they're not doing this micro testing on every batch. And that seems to be, you know, obviously what the big concern has been is that this is mold or, you know, something like that. Um, so I think it, they probably should have done it at least for a while until they had multiple batches proving they didn't need to do it. It also shows that they have a batch code and a lot code. So the batch code is different from their production code. So the batch code doesn't match what they put on the bottom of their lipsticks. This is a different number. This number kind of shows what she was talking about, like the vat. This would go in, this is what whatever they made in that vat. And it has a lot number. So how those differentiate is, say you got like a full size Bite Beauty lipstick and they were filling those full Bite Beauty lipsticks from this big vat. So they fill, fill, fill. They say they fill like 500 of the big tubes of lipstick. So that is assigned a lot number. Then, but then if they still have some left in this batch, but say they want to fill like the little ones, the little mini size lipsticks, that's going to have a different lot number because you have a different components going into. So that's why we assign a different, that's why we not only have a batch number. So if it, the same, if the whole batch is bad, you can throw away the whole batch. You can throw away the big lipstick tubes and the little lipstick tubes. But if you have, let's say something only went wrong with the little lipsticks, then you could just, you know, bring, then you could just fix the little lipsticks because you know that there's not a problem with the big lipsticks. Um, obviously she only had one size in this one, but that's kind of how those two would differentiate if you were to like look at them. And lastly, let's look at the testing that they had performed. So this one, it says they did color, odor, appearance, and texture. So this is the interesting part to me because if, these lipsticks were, you know, obviously they have a smell to match standard. So if there is a standard they are supposed to be matching, it should match that. Visual, it's supposed to match the standard. Texture is supposed to match the standard. And that's where it shows somebody checked it, but unless these problems occurred after the checks, like they should have noticed, you know, a lot of the problems that were on there. Basically this document just shows that they don't do micro testing on every batch. They do have these lot, that they do have batch codes, they do have lot codes. I don't know why they use this production code because those codes help you control if one of the, if, if it was only like a couple of shades that were bad, then they could have just brought them back and been like, oh, it's only these two shades. But now you've had to recall the whole line, which is a huge, huge problem and very costly. And everything else is that they checked for texture and everything. People are finding problems. I don't know how many they checked. I don't know if just the facility checked. I don't know if they did like, I don't know if Jacqueline's team did an external check afterwards, but they should have pulled their own, you know, just to make sure for her own sake. So I hope me explaining this kind of brought some clarity to what these documents are. I, and as an update, I did get a refund on my lipstick. I think everyone should have gotten it by now, but I did get a refund on my lipstick. I just saw a lot of people speculating what these documents meant, so I just kind of wanted to bring my perspective and let you know what I believe these documents to represent. So if you learned something, don't forget to click the like button and click the subscribe button as well so you don't miss a new video. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!